It's been there since the foundation of the world, reshaping man's thoughts and ideas of life and redirecting man's pursuit in life to fit its agenda. It's a matter of these guys working through men endlessly using every way to hinder the advancement of the kingdom of God. It's Mammon, the spirit behind money. Charles and Susan Opio in their book Unmasking Mammon help their readers unmask this deadly spirit and embark on a journey back to the Father. Unmasking Mammon is a must read. Now available on Amazon and on order at cyruscom254 at gmail.com for physical copies. Grab your copy today and start off your journey to overcoming the spirit of mammon. Unmasking Mammon by Charles and Susan Opio. Hello and welcome to the Cyrus community. This is Business Unusual. We continue talking about prayer and of course in our context, we are talking about prayer in the marketplace. And when we talk about prayer in the marketplace, yes. we are not separating it from prayer at home. No. I think, yeah? no, no, no. We are saying prayer is essential in every area. Yes. But our context mm -hmm. for now, because you'll find that in the context of prayer, prayer has been taught for generations. Yes. But there are some areas of prayer that have been taught that primarily deal with our home, our family, our individual situations, and yes. we covered that too. Mm -hmm. But we want you to understand that based on our calling and our sending, yes. we are focusing our prayer on the marketplace because that's one area that there's never been much clarity mm -hmm. on how to interact with prayer within our day. It's almost like people think, go out there, do you, mm -hmm. come to and church, then, come home, and pray. And I like what you've just said. Yes. Prayer in our area of calling. Yes. Meaning in your jurisdiction, there is the way you need to pray. Yes. Because it's we don't just have a blanket yes. prayer. So when you talk about the marketplace and say TCC, we are talking about prayer in the marketplace because yes. that's what the, the current word, the prophetic word we have in the house yes. is pointing to the marketplace. Exactly. So when we say context, we are saying prayer in the marketplace. And that's why yes. you had us saying that prayer is when man yes. exercises his God-given authority. Yes. And this is legal authority given by heaven yes. for you to operate in the earth to invoke heaven's influence on in the world correct. or on the world. I think that's an important distinction. Yes. Man has legal authority in the earth. Okay. Okay. But we're asking God to intervene in the world mm. because we don't need God to intervene in the earth. Mm -hmm. God doesn't need intervention on the trees. They are growing. Okay. Creation is thriving as it was designed. Yes. But the earth, world is where problems and are. And I think also when you talk about the earth and the world, yes. if somebody is joining us for the first time, they'll be like, okay, wait. Why are you differentiating? Why are you making yes. it there? Is there a distinct difference yes. between the earth and the world? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And this is a principle. The Bible talks about creation, heavens and earth. And if you go into the entire context of the, of the seven days of creation, the world is not discussed. God yes. never said, let there be world. Yeah. So what is the world? So world is not another name for earth. Exactly. Yeah. World is the environment in which man has created his functionality in the earth. Mm. So a world is not a place. Mm. Our world is a dimension of influence yes. that affects every area of life per time, mm. per age, yes. per season. And that is why the devil has power over the world, not the earth. Mm. And now when you say that, now somebody will understand that God created man yes. and placed him in the earth. Exactly. He told him, be fruitful, yes. multiply, have dominion, subdue. And then Jesus comes and says, you are in the world, but Thank you're not you. of the world. Thank you. you will be confused if you think world is another name for earth, exactly. because you think Jesus is saying, this earth is not our home. And that's Thank why we call you. those songs. Exactly. This earth is not my home. No, this world. And that is where <laughs> the conversation we had on prayer on, on, on heaven yes. has to be understood. That, listen, God is not interested in taking you out of the earth. He's interested in taking you out of the World. And we have a conversation on earth <laughs> and world yes. in, our, uh, in our channel yes. where we talked about the earth that God created and the world that became after creation 
after the fall of man. And that's why you always hear that if you're in the world and you love the world, the love of the Father is not in you. Thank Which you. world? Not the so earth. we have scriptures that yes. if you do not have that understanding Clarity. that earth and world are not the same thing, yes. you'll keep wondering, okay, listen, this Bible is confusing. Exactly. And I think also the problem comes when the church looks for all the scriptures that talk about the world, telling us do not be conformed to this world. Yes. This is not your home. Yeah. Do not be... And I'm like, listen, yeah. we now confirm this is not where we world, belong. World, <laughs> world, if I may digress a bit, yeah. is a sum total of a mindset mm. that influences and impacts life. Okay. So when we say this world, that world, the first world, the second world, even the, the, the Babylonians know that. Yes. That there are different worlds mm -hmm. based on how life is carried out or manifested by whatever influence. Mm. So you're talking about systems here. Yes. And that's why we always talk about systems that are against the kingdom of God. Exactly. So the kingdom of God in the earth is supposed to be advancing. Yes. But the world systems will always stop exactly that advancement. Yes. And when we are here and saying the kingdoms of this world have become mm -hmm. the kingdoms of our God and his Christ yes. is because that in the world there are different kingdoms. Exactly. All against the kingdom of God. So so it's, it's interesting we are touching world world world. It yes. looks like somebody needs to understand yes. what this is really about because it will help you understand why you're praying to situations. In fact, mm. scripture tells us that Christ was crucified before the foundation of the world. Mm. Foundation, not, not creation, creation, guys, not creation. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why we are saying that prayer is man exercising his God-given yes. legal authority in the earth yes. to invoke heaven's influence on the world. There you go. I mean, we're not playing with words here. No. No. They if you understand that, what needs to change is the world. <laughs> yes. That's where problems are. Mm. And that's mm. the principle of prayer. Yes. So if you get that picture in your background, then every other thing that we are saying begins to get context. Okay. Yes. So, listen. Um, that means that prayer is meant to be answered. Why? Mm. Because it means God had a plan for how man would live. Something happened and a world was founded. Okay. And uh, John explains that world. Do not love the world or the things in the world. Then he explains the things. And he puts them in three dimensions to help us understand how it was founded. Mm -hmm. The last of the eyes, the last of the flesh, and the pride of life. Mm. That's why you get confused when you hear scripture, for God so loved the world, tells you do not love the world. It's not the same sentence. Mm. And then if you love the world, yes. the, the love of the Father is not in you. Yeah. And you're like, okay, listen, I'm not supposed to love this world. I'm supposed to fly away. Exactly. No, no, no. Separate the two. And that's why yes. Jesus says, go ye into all the world. Mm -hmm. Not the earth. Not the earth. Not the earth. If anything, <laughs> the earth, yes. creation is waiting. It's the Lord's. The manifestation <laughs> yeah, of yeah. the sons of God. Yes. Yeah. So, once you get that clear, then your prayer becomes very clear. Mm. Because your prayer is understanding that God intends to answer your prayer. Why? Because something is wrong with our world. Mm. Something so, is you're in a place that is designed to rebel you. Yes. A place that is designed to make sure you fail. A place that is designed to make sure you do not make it as a son of God. We always have to separate that. That there are people in this world, these people, they are sons of God, and then there's another group that is not the sons of God. If you come into the world, the systems of this world, and you're the son of God, they design it yes. for you to fail. True. That's why you need prayer. That's what systems You are. can't walk into that system on your own. Exactly. That's why you need prayer. Exactly. Yeah. And so that tells us that prayer is meant to be answered. Yes. 100%. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, God would not ask us to pray. Good. <laughs> God doesn't ask us to do something. Okay, guys, get this clear. I grew up in a church structure that said two things that nowadays I have very serious misgivings about. Okay. First one was that God needs our prayer. <laughs> Second is that God needs our praise. And worship. The term need is dangerous to use mm. in those spaces. Mm. God does not need our prayer. We need to pray. Mm, mm. Totally different. Because when we say God needs our prayer, it's like, it's he, like he is sitting in heaven and feeding on, yes, on your prayer. Or your Meaning, 
on, in your praise and worship. Yes. Meaning you are the one who is sustaining God. Exactly. Now remember, we said that when you come from a fallen position, we even created our own gods. There you go. We saw that in the wilderness when they created the calf, the golden yes. calf. Now, when man is left alone, he creates his own God, yes. and then he sets parameters of how to access exactly. this God. Yes. Now, in the world that is fallen, men have their own gods. They yes. have created their own gods. Yep. But they have also set parameters of how do we approach this God. Exactly. One of the parameters is we will pray to him because he needs our prayers. That's it. Now, we from the kingdom of God, we take that concept there you go. and bring it to God Almighty, the creator of the heaven and earth, who existed before you yes. were created. You know? And you know, when we take scriptures out of context, like the Bible says, let your prayers be like sweet smelling incense. incense to God. You know why it is sweet smelling? Mm. Because his purpose is about to be fulfilled in your life. Mm. It is not because he needs a sweet smell. He doesn't need perfume. Mm. And that's why we got that thing of God feeds on your yes, he doesn't praise feed on and your anything. worship. He pre-existed our prayer. Mm. He pre-existed our praise. He mm -hmm. pre-existed creation. Mm. He does not require anything. So it is us who need to pray. Yes. And we need to pray because we are in this system or this world where everything is set against us. Yes. So we are calling heaven. That's what we are saying. That God has given man legal authority. Exactly. To call heaven to come into the world and rearrange it for him. Yes. Because man without God will not be able to operate in this system that's that simple. is set yes. for him to fail. That's it. That's why we need to pray. And that's why God tells us to pray. Why? Because the, the world is under the control of another. Okay through the three things we've discussed, mm -hmm. to correct the outcomes of those things, God has the answers. Mm. We need to pray. God, the only reason those things are going on is the very same reason we gave before. Because when man was given authority in the earth, there are things he can carry out mm -hmm. without being stopped. Yes. That can explain to you scriptures that may bother you, like, where was God when Cain killed Abel? Mm. He could not interfere because man has authority in the earth. I think in this conversation, especially the prayer series, yes. we've really talked about God gave man authority, authority in the earth. Yes. And that's why sometimes you're like, you know what? You have the authority in the earth. Exactly. But in this same earth where you have authority, yes. the enemy has set up systems. Exactly. And that's why he told Jesus, I can give to whosoever I will. There you go. Because he took the authority from man. And that's what we're trying to get back. That's why you hear yes. people saying, get back what belongs to you. There you go. Because the enemy yes. took from so, man. So to all these many stories you hear about where was God, if God is such a good <laughs> God, how can people be killed? If God is such a good God, how can, mm. listen, God didn't kill anyone. People killed people. So we should be asking where is man yes, that has where, authority where, where, in the yes. earth? When these crazy people are killing people, mm. where are the good people? Who can stop the killing? So when you talk about creation is awaiting the manifestation yes. of the sons of God, yes. the sons of God when they arise, they bring remember order. the sons of God do not arise out of their own power, out yes. of their own makeup. They are sons of God, God in them. Yes. So when they arise, God in the earth is yes. seen. So when the sons of God yeah. do not arise, God is not the seen evil, evil, evil in Evil will earth. prevail. Hmm. And, and ultimately, even the argument that is raised is even sillier because, okay, let's assume then, let's give Lord, Lord out of the question. Mm -hmm. Why are you raising morality? Mm. Why does it matter then? If there is no God, then there should be no law. Mm. If there is no law, then you shouldn't query who is killing who. Mm. People should kill everybody mm. because, after all, there are no consequences. You see how it doesn't make sense? I think also maybe what you're talking about is when we go back to the book of Judges. Yes. When there was no king, meaning there was no voice of God yes. in the earth. The son yes. of God yes. arising in the earth. Exactly. And everyone did what was right in their own eyes. When there was no speaking prophet and mm. no king, mm. paraphrased, when this, when, in other words, when people are not getting any direction from God, mm. people did what was right in their own eyes. And that is why, that's why we need prayer. Because yes. people have been doing what is right in their own eyes. So and we've seen how it turns out. So when you're calling heaven into the earth. Yes. When you say that man has legal authority in the earth. And he's calling heaven to come into the world to bring order. And that's why we are saying that yes. prayer, when you talk about prayer, it is a deliberate, well thought out act. 
prayer is not random. It's yes. not impulsive. Yes. It's not an emergency action yes. that we take when things yes. are getting out of hand. Yes. hand. It's not something you stand up and decide, this is what I want, therefore let me pray. Exactly. No, you have a proceeding one. Yes. So prayer is not random. Yes. It's not impulsive. Yes. It's not an emergency action. Yeah, that's not what prayer is used for. Yeah. There are pieces where we use it and God out of his mercy <laughs> responds. But that's not the primary posture of prayer yes it, it's like some of you know this scenario when you have certain friends and relatives and so on who never talk to you until they're in a crisis and, and so suddenly they speak they show up and suddenly they need your help most of us our prayer has been like that mm, so we only come with this emergency in the earth yes. lord can you come there's an yes. emergency here yes wow that means if i didn't have an emergency i will not pray <laughs> That's how many of us have been brought up because we think prayer is for emergencies. Mm. In fact, the way we are in introduced to prayer yes. is because things are going so bad, what you need is prayer. Mm. Instead of not being told, had you been in prayer, things would not have this. become so bad. Wow, that's a good way to look at it. <laughs> had you been in prayer, these things, things would not have become would be okay. bad. Yes. So half the time, the church is like responding yes. to the crises in the exactly. earth. Exactly. So you're looking at the world happening, things are happening. Yes. The earth, things are failing. The soil is not working exactly. as it's supposed to be. The trees are not producing exactly. as they're supposed Then when I see that crisis, yes. then I pray. And that's a problem. Wow. And when we pray like that, our prayer becomes such a, a reaction. Mm. And, a, and because it's also in crisis, some of it even becomes random. Now, remember when we started this conversation and we talked about yes. uh, God talking to Abimelech? Yes. Abimelech did not tell God, I need a prayer. No. God said, Go and pray. Remember what you said that before God initiated. Yes. So when God initiates and you pray, exactly. and that's what you are saying now, exactly. instead of us responding to God, we are reacting to the world. Exactly. So God is supposed to tell us, and then we so when we say yes. we are praying for heaven to come into the earth, yes. remember what you said about the four things intervention, yes. interpose, mediation, yes. and interceding. Yes. All of this should all come from the heavens, not exactly. to the earth, not earth to the yes. heavens. And the model should be mm -hmm. because I have a picture of oh. how things should look in the earth mm -hmm. and they are not looking that way. Yes. Therefore, I'm asking for God to intervene for us to put things in this order. So when I look at my life and something is not working, the only reason I know it's not working is because I've seen the heavens yes. and I've seen God's will exactly. for my life. Exactly. Therefore, it is from heaven to the earth where I see that this is not supposed to be like this. Therefore, yes. I ask for divine intervention. That's the key. Prayers should be from heaven to earth. Yeah, yeah. When we start taking our prayers from earth to heaven, then we're in a problem. <laughs> that's where we've created Because now what we are doing yeah. with that mindset, and, and uh, sorry to say, but this is really the word that should be used, then our prayer is induced by evil. Explain, please. So when evil happens, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. then we pray. Mm. When the devil acts, then we pray. So when you when say that there's an accident, for example, yes. there are so many accidents on the roads. Now let's, let's pray. pray. There are so many uh, children who are being killed. Yes. Let's pray. Exactly. There is hunger. Let's pray. pray. The devil acts, mm. we pray. The devil acts, we pray. And half the time, the sad thing about that prayer mm. is that you're praying after the fact and the damage has been done. Mm. So imagine if we were praying correctly, those things wouldn't happen. Mm. That's powerful. As opposed to the things happen, so we are busy daily. Searching for what the devil is doing, mm. not what mm. God is doing. Mm. And that becomes the basis of our prayer. When look wow. at our prayer lists, our prayer lists are defined by what the devil has already done mm. or is currently doing. So what you are saying here is we need to examine our lives. Yes. Let's ask ourselves TCC. Now that you're praying, what's the foundation of your prayer? Is it because the enemy has attacked yes. or because heaven has spoken? Exactly. Is it because there is a lot of noise yes. from the enemy or you've heard a voice from God? Yes. What is causing you to pray? Is it because you're looking at your life or you're looking at the life God has intended for you? Yes. What you've become today will definitely call for a prayer. Exactly. If you look at who God has created us to be, yes. then we will know that God is already telling us like Abimelech, Go to Abraham, who is yes. a prophet. Yes. Let him pray for you so that I can heal you, my friend. Exactly. I need you to yes. pray because you're not where you're supposed to if, be. If you study the prayers of Jesus, mm -hmm. you'll notice he always spoke about what God intended. Mm, God's will. Not what the devil is doing. Okay. Wow. 
That should be our primary power because prayer is asking for intervention. Yes. Prayer is not complaining. Mm. Prayer is not taking the devil's issues to God. Mm. Prayer is bringing God's issues to bear on the devil. Entirely different power. Yes. If we, but you see, to do that, there are two dimensions of prayer that must become prominent. Okay. The first thing is prayer must be proof of our relationship with God. Mm. The reason prayer I pray like that is it means proof. me and God have a relationship. Mm. That's why I pray. Wait. So, <laughs> before, we said that before, yes. but we are going to reiterate it here. Yes. Before you pray, who are you praying to? That's the key. Do you know him? Do you believe in him? Do you trust him? Do you know that when I pray for sure he is hearing this? Is he the initiator of this prayer? Has he shown you something from the heavens? Therefore, that causes you to pray. Yes. Relationship. Yes. And then wow. let me use an example to bring that. Yeah. When Jesus, the prayer we all think Jesus taught called the Lord's Prayer was not the Lord's Prayer. Mm -hmm. The question explains the answer. The disciples told Jesus, teach us how? Notice how. He didn't say teach us a prayer. Mm. Teach us how to pray. Yes. John taught his disciples. Now you need to understand that the ones asking were John's disciples. Mm. So when they say teach us how to pray, John taught his disciples, they realized the context had changed. Mm. Mm. And therefore, the way they were praying in the days of John could no longer be applicable here. Yeah. Yes. Then Jesus said to them, when you pray, pray after this manner. Okay. English, pray in this way. Don't pray like this. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is not a formula. No. I'm not giving you a prayer I'm not that you a exactly prayer. say these words. No, no, I didn't say pray like this. Okay. I said pray after this manner. I'm giving you the overview, the structure, mm -hmm. the context for prayer yes and the first thing about that context is our father mm. relationship for me to say our father yes i'm simply saying i'm his son exactly relationship exactly he is my father many people <laughs> many people say he is my father mm. but they don't say i'm his son simple it's our so crucial father. our father and, and he said something powerful you know we rush to who art in heaven yes say, wait. wait 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 before wait. you deal with where he's coming from let's deal <laughs> okay. with who he is. Mm. When I say our father, I'm positioning myself. As a son. Okay. Okay. And notice he said our. That means the result must be wider than individual. Mm. Even though you're praying for divine intervention where your life yes. is not working, your rent is not paid, you maybe you don't have enough food, you don't have a job, yes. you're looking for a job. Your intention is it will go to other Others lives. will benefit. I might this. start here, yes. but I know where I'm headed yes. to. Our father. Our father. That's he powerful. didn't say God. Mm. Mm. Now let me explain the difference. <laughs> Assume my father is the president of the country. Okay. And I need something from him and I call him. If I start by dad, I've just begun with our father. I think you break all protocols. Immediately. You go to his office and you say dad. Immediately. Yes. But if I say Mr. President, mm. I have just positioned myself at a subject level, hmm. dealing with his office, not him. That's why we have a conversation on God or Father. Yes. And maybe many people are like, okay, wait, is he God? Is he Father? Wait, he is everything. Yes. yes. But if, like you're saying, yep. if we go to God as God, yes. creator of heaven and earth, yes. the God who says and there was, yes. he, and another person goes to his father, mm -hmm. that relationship is different. Yes. And that's why Jesus says, go to your father yeah. knows, not God knows. Yes. Your father, you have a relationship with him. He is God to the world, but he is father, father to, to you. you. If you understand that, you will have more confidence yes. in him because you say, listen, uh, he's my father, I'm his son. So, so, I have confidence yes. he will hear me. Yes. So there's a way you can reason. And these two thoughts running in your head over time will settle you. God is my father. Mm -hmm. My father is God. Powerful. One carries more weight. Yes. God is my father is a position of awe. Oh, wow. My father is God is a relational. My father is the president of this Thank nation. Thank you. Very My different. father is the CEO of this company. Yes. My father is the 
You see how powerful it is. Very different. Relationship first. Our yes. father. Our father. Yes. It's off that, and I won't go into the whole process because this is not the context for teaching that I'm sure it's something we have covered before, but yes. this is the focal point here. Mm -hmm. The focal point is your kingdom come. come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. heaven. So prayer's structure must be confined to God's kingdom being done on the earth. So he is my father. He has a kingdom. Mm. He has something he wants to establish on the earth. Yes. That is the position of my prayer. Mm. At the time Jesus was teaching them this prayer, he did not touch any problem existing. Mm. Mm. He did not deal with, with Herod or with anything. No. He dealt with what no. is paramount is mm. God's intent and purpose to come into the earth. And I think there's something else we need to go back to. That when you talk about our father, and then we talk about who art in heaven. Let's talk about that who art in heaven yes. and how powerful is it is yes. it is yes. if we come to that realization that yes, this is your father, but who art in heaven? Who art in heaven. Now, who art in heaven? You know, it's a nice King James phrase. Yes. Which literally means who <laughs> operates, <laughs> who operates in a dimension that is invisible, that has power beyond this environment. In the principle of, of the speaking of that time, saying that it's like our Father who dwells in the unseen mm. but has influence over the seen. Amen. That's powerful. That's the basic way to look at that statement. Mm. Once you understand that, it means the reason I'm talking to you is because you sit in the unseen. Now, the unseen means many things. Yes. It means you are unseen but you see. Mm. Okay? Yes. Which may mean that you can see beyond even what I'm asking. Oh, yes. Or see. Yes. Two, you can see because you're the one who determined how things should work. Yes. And everything should line up with you, mm. not with me. Mm, powerful. I'm acknowledging all that. So when I talk about you who art in heaven. Yes. You who art in a realm that is superior than yes. mine. And therefore I'm calling on you because when you come into my realm, you will rearrange it. Yes. So when you say we are in the earth, not of the earth, is because, I mean, we are in the world and not of the world. Yes. In this world, when the heavens come, yes. they rearrange everything. They, they, they bring order. And if we understand how the heavens yes. had determined the earth should operate, we will know exactly what to do. Powerful. So the, the Lord's Prayer, yes. our Father, yes. who art in heaven, notice mm. Jesus gave us a clue. Start with relationship. Yes. Do not go to, with, to God with all scriptures like, uh, uh, God, I've just come so that we reason together. You know the people who tell God that. We need to reason together. With yes. who? Yes. <laughs> like Job, who, who do you Imagine know? the reasoning requires <laughs> equal understanding of a matter. So we actually <laughs> misrepresent that scripture. Exactly. So when you say, let, come, let us reason yes. together. Exactly. My friend, God is not telling you that me and you, we are the yes. same. Come, come. You yes. say, uh, Let's talk. And, and what also <laughs> raises the issue of the Father is you cannot pray to one whom you do not know. Oh, yes. Who are you praying to? Mm. That means you're not, if you do not know who you're praying to, you do not know if he can answer. You do not know if he has any answers. Mm -hmm. You do not know how he answers. Yes. And you will not even recognize the answer if he gives it. Mm -hmm. So you must know the one yes. you pray to. Guys, notice how much we always take you back to the Father. Because if you don't know this Father, you're in your prayers, you will be talking to yourself. Exactly. And that is why many prayers are not answered. Because one, you don't know who you're talking to. Two, yes. you're talking to yourself. You're actually telling yourself the troubles. And actually, it's like you're amplifying your exactly. problems in the name of prayer. Yeah. So in prayer, yes. you're not talking to yourself. You're talking to yourself. So that's one primary issue that Jesus captured. Yes. The second thing he captured with the kingdom come mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. prayer, listen carefully, mm. is our participation in God's purposes for the earth. Wow. That so raises prayer to another whole scale. Please explain that. Prayer is our participation, meaning God has intents for the earth. We all know something went wrong. God did not change his mind. Mm. Something went wrong. Mm. We're together. Okay. So God's will permanently is to restore the original order. Okay. We always use that word. Yes. The original order, yes. God's original intent, yes. God intended to do something. Can we go back and explain what we mean when we say exactly. uh, original order? What does that mean? People, we cannot change what scripture says. And we cannot write our own scriptures. Yes. The Bible is clear. God says, let us make man in our own image after our own likeness. likeness. Yes. Let them have dominion over the earth. Let them be fruitful. Let them multiply. Let them do all these things. And mm -hmm. then God says to man, after saying that to himself, yes. meaning God shows you his thoughts, mm -hmm. 
his will, mm -hmm. his intent. Let us make man. God is giving you insight into his own thinking. Yes. This is my intent for man. Then he comes back and says, now, to the man, do this. Be fruitful. Multiply. Yes. Fill the earth. In other words, fulfill my Fine. mandate. Okay. My will. So that is his primary will. Mm -hmm. Okay? That will is so strong that when uh, Noah messed up, uh, uh, Adam. The, the, the people of Noah's day oh, okay. messed up, mm -hmm. God still did not take Noah out of the world. Mm -hmm. He started a new world. And he gave them the same command. And he gave them the same command. So let me ask you, and this is a question I'll still ask yes. our viewers. If man did not fall, what was the intent of God? We see God create man in Genesis chapter 1. God forms man in Genesis chapter 2. Man falls in chapter 3. So, God only operated with man in his will, 1 and 2. Exactly. After that? Restoration. <laughs> and, and here's the thing. Let's get this out of our mind. God did not adjust to the devil's program. After the fall? Yes. Okay. God did not adjust. The devil's program was destruction. Mm. God's journey is not destruction. Mm. God's journey is restoration. Yes. So the idea that the end of the everything is destruction <laughs> did not come from God. So let's go back to Genesis <laughs> 1 and 2. Have you ever asked yourself, if man did not fall, what yeah. was the plan? What was the plan? Because right now we are so preoccupied with redemption. Yes. What if there was no fall? Exactly. What if there was no fall? Yes. What was the plan of God? In other words, if man did not eat, he was not meant to die. Okay, so wait. can we go back to God's what plan? What was life then? Can Again. we go back to God's plan? That's the question. God's plan was for man to never die. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not for man to live in heaven eternally. Okay. For man to never, never die. This means God gave some man something at the beginning called eternal life. Okay, that's a question we'll still ask. That's where man started. So if man didn't fall, man would have lived. He there was be, no death. He would be having eternal life. Death is a result. Yes. Do we know what it is to live without death? Do we even imagine, try to imagine like, wait, <laughs> God didn't intend for us to die. God didn't intend, intend for you to be broke. The things exactly. that we are now preoccupied with. God did not intend for you to be sick. God did not intend for you to go to church. God did not intend for you to have these problems that we have today. These were results of the fall. Simple. So what was the plan? And, and, and <laughs> I hope this embeds in your head. Yes. God had no plan for death. A, meaning when God started with man, he didn't give him a life, then said to him, this life you live for X amount of time. When you're done with that life, you will die. Then you'll come and live with me. God could have simply lived with him. God gave man eternal life. Man lost it. God is giving it back. Yes. God is not taking us anywhere. He's giving us back what he gave us. But because of our fall, God will allow us for a season until everything is established. He may allow us to dwell with him in the heavenlies, which is where we came from in the beginning, mm -hmm. to just return us where he took us in the first place. Mm. I'll say that again. Where do you think man was when God breathed him? Oh. Because the Bible says, and God formed the man, yes. that's a body, mm. formed. Then God breathed, man. and man, spirit, became a living soul. So God always intended for man's spirit to become a living soul. Yes. And that is why the ultimate fear and the ultimate punishment is death. Hmm. And that's why you also see God saying, the Bible talks about in Genesis, and God took man and placed him in the garden. Took him from where? <laughs> took him from where? Placed him in the garden. There you go. So when he says, let's create man in our own image, that man was, there was no intention of death. And, and There was you, no plan. And if you want to, read the last book of the Bible, yes. where is man back? On the earth. the earth. Ultimately, this is the ultimate plan of God. And so you must understand, if God had plan B and C and D, then the cross was plan A. Meaning there will be a plan B mm. and a plan C. We are told the cross is the ultimate. Mm. Mm. Scripture clearly says it's the ultimate plan. 
Meaning, from the cross, redemption is reestablished. Hmm. From so, the cross, we begin the journey back to eternal life, mm -hmm. not the journey to heaven. So, when you're talking about prayer, prayer is when we know that this world has come to kind of slow us down yes. from establishing what God intended. Absolutely. Whenever we tell you that you must be on the timeline of God, yes. what we are simply telling you is that God never stopped and adjusted to the plan of the enemy. When man fell, God's plan still continued. Yes. And that's why we always say, do you find yourself on the timeline of God? Are you still in God's purposes? Or now you are trapped? in the workings of the enemy in the earth that blind you yes. to the purposes of God. Exactly. So God never stopped. God never That's stopped. That's why he's asking us to pray. Yeah. Why does he want us to participate in the earth? Because mm -hmm. his purposes are fulfilled in the earth, mm. not in heaven. Not in heaven. Powerful. <laughs> Powerful. God's purposes are only fulfilled in the earth. Yes. The will of God can only be revealed and fulfilled in mm. the earth. earth. So when we do not pray, when we do not create this interference, mm. when we do not move in that way, we give the devil a free license mm. Mm. to run, operate, and mess up everything God intended. Wow. Wow. That's a true journey. Mm -hmm. That's a true battle. When we don't pray, yes. we said in this context, yep. prayer is where we are giving heaven license yes. to come into the earth. If we don't, who is in the earth? Who has the license? The enemy. The enemy. Doing whatever he wants mm. to do. Mm. Because as long as God's intent is not known, wow. the enemy's intent is rampant. And it's what is known, what's what we see, yes. and sometimes you get so convinced that the enemy is winning. That's why we always think that the enemy and God, devil and God are at war. Are in competition? No. No, no, no. <laughs> All we have been is we've been privy to, we've yeah. been visible. We have seen the enemy's model mm -hmm. and intent of how the world should run. We have not seen God's model and intent. So much so that we've believed a lie that the enemy's model and intent is the ultimate mm. model in the earth. Yes. And God's intent model can only be in heaven. In other words, we've separated. We've yes. given the world to the devil. Yes. And we've given heaven to God. Do. We've divided real estate. <laughs> You know, thinking, what now the problem, there? we have relegated the earth to the enemy, exactly. yet that's where we live. This is the problem now. And then God in the heavens, yes. where we hope to go one day. Exactly. Oh no. So we are the ones who have to battle with the devil. Mm. God has to sit, sit it out in heaven and wait for us to show up one day. And is that not why our prayers are always like begging God, can you come? Because by looking at what is happening around yes. us, we cannot do a thing. We cannot change what is yes. happening. So our prayers become prayers of uh, permanently feeling like, God, you left us here. You created us and dumped us here and left us with the devil. Then you lost exactly. yourself in a place called heaven. Now, go. let's go back to this place called the kingdom come yes. and his will. Yes. Come into the earth. Yes. When we talk about Jesus telling us, talk to our Father mm -hmm. who is in heaven, another yes. realm. Yes. That realm has the design, the templates that should be installed in the yes. earth. Yes. Now, when we talk about your kingdom come, your will be done. Yes. Why? What are we saying? What we're basically saying is that God's will mm -hmm. is the foundation for every prayer. Mm. It's the root cause. Yes. It's the process. Yes. It is where you start. Mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. I say your kingdom come, your will be done, it means his kingdom can only be manifested by understanding his will. Okay. This becomes the central issue for prayer. Yes. In other words, prayer, the power of prayer, is knowing that something is God's will, hmm. and that is why I pray, and God will back his will. Yes. Now, this creates a very small uh, thought process that can change you forever. Okay. There are scriptures that confuse us. Scriptures that say things like, before you ask, I had answered you. Hmm. What does that mean? Hmm. Simply means this. Yes. Because my will is already established, my structure is already clear, mm -hmm. the answers are already here. Yes. When you pray, you're just accessing what has already been allocated. I think for me what I'm hearing is TCC. God has given us the technology of changing our market space. Yes. When you say we are going to the marketplace, we are simply saying, yes, that place needs to be on earth as it is in heaven. 
needs his kingdom to come. God yes. has given us the technology that when you pray, you're calling God's will, God's perfect picture of that place you are as it is in heaven. Yes. The only way to bring heaven into the earth is when he says, pray. Let his picture come into the earth and superimpose into your market space. Yes. So that now when you stand up and say you're representing heaven on the earth, when you speak, you're allowing heaven to speak. When you do, you are giving your hands to heaven to allow heaven to do and change your real estate into what God intended. You are actually telling heaven, yes. come into the earth through yes. our prayers. Yes, because the idea is first of all understanding that God is interested and in charge of the marketplace. Mm-hmm. That's you powerful, see, we've yes. always thought marketplace is where we go to battle. Mm, then we come. But to God, go. God, God, in fact, we said God lives in the church. Mm. This is so the when you go to the God. marketplace, yes. then we come and look for God in the church. Yes, the problem. Mm. When your mind is the church mm. is the house of God, yes. then marketplace is the house of who? Oh. <laughs> Meanwhile, the house of God is you and me. So, you're simply saying that we have to change our language. Yes. In this season of the marketplace, yes. we have to change our so language. So, if I am the house of God, then that marketplace takes the shape of God. Mm, mm. But if the house of God is a building, yes. then I go and fight my battles with the enemy out then, there. Then I come and tell him in the notice house. Notice how weak that mentality is. Exactly. That I'm here alone. Yes. I actually prayed and I hope some of that grace came with came me Came out here. here. Then when I, when I finish here, I go back to him. Yes. Notice how weak we become when we don't realize that God wants to be in you, work with you, for yes. you, through you. Yes. He's all in you. That is the core. So when you're going out, mm. God's intent, God's purposes are going with you. God's intent? God's purposes are going with you. Mm. So as you're praying and you're operating, you're establishing that will of his. He didn't say he wanted his will established in the church. Mm. <laughs> Said on earth. That means everywhere there is people. Yes. Everywhere there is life. Mm. That means every dimension, whether agriculture, economy, business, whatever. So if that is the principle, then you understand that. That's why prayer starts by asking the question, what is God's intent in this business I am doing? Mm. That's a good question. That it is you who is looking at what you're doing today. Yes. Some people are employed. Look yes. at that office and ask yourself, what's God's intent? There you go. Is it for him to get for you to get a salary, to get a raise, promotion? Really? And what's I, God's intent? And let me say when I say God's intent, we're mm. not talking about what is God's intent for the people. Mm. What is God's intent overall? Why am I saying that? Yes. Because in the last in the, in the old order we thought our ultimate journey was for us to go into a business environment in your office and get people saved. Mm. No, no, God wants to change the organization, mm-hmm. change the structure, yes. change the order of life, change the decision-making matrix. Mm. If God was just looking to get people rescued, then when, whenever he sent people into mm. any place, mm. there are some things he wouldn't do. Yes. There are people Jesus healed their children and they were not born again. Mm. There are things that were done. Jesus fed the 5,000. They were not let saved. them go. Yes. They didn't join any church. Hmm. So God's impact must affect humanity. Yes, that's, that's good. Not just get somebody saved. Hmm. That's the difference. So sometimes you get people saved and leave the systems. Yes. And if you leave the systems unchanged, give it time. Those people who are born again, they'll be out. Yes. That's what we call backsliding. Exactly. That's what we call backsliding in the church. Yes. Why? Because this person you got out of the world into the kingdom of God, you never gave them purpose here. Yes. You never showed them the Father. So when they came here, they're like, okay, who will sustain me? You yes. called me. You told me to say after you. You told me to say amen. After that, you left. Yes. How am I supposed to stand? And many times, sadly, we take them out of the system mm. when they could have changed the system. Wow. That's another one. Not yes. out of the world. Out, out of, of the, the system. system. Leave that. Come and serve God. Mm. No, 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 mm. no. Serve God there. Wow. Yes. Have an impact there. Yes. Change things there. Because of you, everybody will benefit. Mm. Because when Joseph steps into the system, lives are changed in nations. Now, you know why we have to have workshops? 
yep. why we have to have master classes, yep. why we must have conferences outside of the church setup. Yes. Because many people, when they hear that change that place, they wonder how if I'm not having a morning glory, I don't have a lunch hour, I don't have an evening service, how am I supposed to change this place? Because that's all you that you know. Yes. So when we talk about a workshop where we come and have people, captains of industry sitting and asking questions, how am I supposed to change without saying praise the Lord? Uh, how am I supposed this. to change yes. without telling people open your Bible to John chapter 4? How am I supposed to change such that an atheist in my company or a person who tells you I have experienced God and I did not have a good experience because of the people, how are you going to change them? Exactly. Yeah. And so let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. As you'll see a lot of that changing as we do things unfolding. Some of you may already be aware of this, some have never had this. Yes. This is a principle. In the governance of a kingdom, of a nation, of a country, not every strategy is public. Hmm. Hmm. The cabinet does not tell us their deliberations. There's no live streaming of a cabinet meeting. <laughs> okay. There's no live streaming of a security meeting. Yes. There's no live streaming of a, of a, a planning economic strategy. There is only what is public facing announcements on stuff that has been done. Mm. So it is only in the church that we've made the mistake of making all our policies public. Mm. Mm. It is only us who stand on the pulpit and tell everybody everything we are planning. Mm. And so what do they do? They outplan us every single time. Yes. So you're going to learn that if you're part of the ecclesia, if mm. you're part of marketplace, yes. what you are doing, this live stream goes everywhere. This is not where we speak the depth mm. of things. Mm. This is not where we dig into kingdom structure to establish patterns. This is where we teach everybody how to access God's purpose, will in those matters. But when it comes to execution, when it comes to strategy, we have master classes. We have ecclesia meetings. We have cabinet, inner strategy meetings. Because strategies are to be implemented, not to be publicized. And that's where we talk about uh, paid up meetings or yes. uh, meetings that require registration. Exactly. Why? Because this is for by invitation only. Yes. So when you hear such meetings, don't think we're talking about it is church, now church in a Being closed place. It is church, now no, this is not. paid up. Now this is church, now we are calling this a workshop or a master class. No. We are simply saying, listen guys, if you're talking of ecclesia, you have to decide, are you part of the ecclesia are you, or are you part of the spectators? People yes. who are like, you know what, you guys You can do be a citizen do. waiting for yes. benefit and yes. it's okay. And it's okay. Listen, there is a group of people that remains in the camp when you're going after the Amalekites. Mm. There is a group of people at Gideon who are told, you go home and wait. Yes. There's that group. Yes. And it's okay to be part of that group. Mm. That group, guys, is the live stream group. Mm. But there are stuff we discuss and talk about, not in tens. Yes. Sometimes five people, sometimes ten, sometimes only fifty. Mm. But the strategies to be implemented there yes. change lives. Mm. Mm. That's how the kingdom has to be governed going forward. Yes. We can no longer have open meetings to talk about kingdom strategy. Mm. We can no longer have a blasting of every plan we are making so the enemy can pre-plan ahead of us. <laughs> That's where you have the Ecclesia meeting. Yes. This is the government of God in the earth. Yes. Are people who say, listen, we are like the parliament of God. When he speaks to us, we know how to strategize, yes. position people in different places. Yep. And there are things that we learn where we say, and you'll always hear saying this, that the ecclesia are not the people who go out with t-shirts written. Yes. Praise the Lord, I'm from nah. heaven. Do what you want. I am here on the earth to change you, take over and finish you. No. The ecclesia are people who will stand up and speak the principles of God without quoting a scripture. Yep. Some people will think, are you shy of the scriptures and this? No, we're not. this is not a public meeting. <laughs> This is not that's a political what, meeting. Yeah, yeah. Are, are you shy of Christ? Mm. Yeah. Are, you, are you feeling shy to mm. say you are born mm. again? Mm. Listen, that mm. has not taken us anywhere. That mm. you can do in the church. But Ecclesia is called being a territorial spirit. Yes. And yet, Invisible oh. being seen in the visible. Mm, say that again. Like my father. Yes. Invisible, yeah. but being felt hmm. in the visible. So when you talk about the manifestation, that creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. Yes. We're not saying one day they are rise and say, T-shirts, here we are, placards, we are the yeah. sons of God. Listen. Bumper sticker. Oh. <laughs> Guys, Daniel. Yes. In Babylon hmm. was not known as the prophet of God. Yes. He was known as Belteshazzar, the keeper hmm. Of the demon Baal's secrets. Mm. That's the title they had given him. Yes. 
he still changed every that function. Yes. Dev, Joseph, the Bible says before Joseph went before Pharaoh, he had to shave. Mm. Now you must understand for a Jew, that was heathen practice. But for the function, he had to shave. And that is why God tells you, it's not about you. It's about, it's about the about you. principles of God in you yeah. that I want to establish. Be all things to all men that you yes. may win some. Okay, let me, let me say something about that thing. Are you ashamed? Yeah. Let me ask you a very simple question. <laughs> very simple. You think God is emotional? Hmm. You're not quoting me. That when now, you're not telling people you're from me, God gets angry, he will deal with you. Really? That's called creating God in our own image. After That's a very likeness. petty activity. Yeah. There are many times our so-called testimonies, so-called, listen, there are testimonies and there are so-called testimonies. When I have a testimony, Listen, it is only valid to another who is trying to go where I am, mm. not to everybody. Mm. I'll explain. Jesus would heal people and say, tell no one. This is Jesus. Mm. Mm. Tell no one. Why? I'm dealing with you, not with the public. Mm. I'm dealing with your situation, not with the public. Yes, why do we write testimonies within a closed group? Some of you say we sometimes tell people, share your testimony. Why? Because we have a shared journey. Mm. We are going towards a particular process. Yes. We are dealing with a particular demon. We need to hear victories of people who have dealt with that demon to encourage us to move forward. But the testimony is not because that God can be happy. No, it's oh, for us. Not for the angels. It's not for the angels. It's for us. It's for us. Mm. And that's why we're talking about prayer. And yes. we're saying that prayer is us allowing God yes. to come into the earth so that he can help us maneuver in this place where he has called us. Yes. We are actually asking for heavenly strength, if you yes. call it that. So that when we stand, when we say that you can speak without saying praise the Lord, yep. for sure your, your deeds will speak louder exactly. than your words. And that's why we're talking about prayers. Keep tracking. Thank you for watching this episode of the Kingdom Conversations. The big question remains, what have you heard? And what are you going to do about it? Keep tracking with us, like and follow us on our social media handles, the Cyrus community on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube. You can send in your questions through Facebook or use the email on your screen. And as Micah 4.4 says, may you be found seated under your vine and under your fig tree. Until our next episode, keep it kingdom, keep it pure.